During their past summer showcase, Xbox revealed three brand new models of the Xbox system, hitting store shelves later this year, uh, bringing the grand total right now to six systems. Really actually kind of five, almost actually kind of only three models. It can be a little confusing with how many different options there are at different price points, so I wanted to break down what the different Xbox options are, the ones currently available and the ones that will soon be available, what I think in terms of value-wise you're getting the most out of, and ultimately just which one's the right one for you. And to begin with, let's just do a quick step-by-step -step overview of all these different models. And we're gonna start at the bottom with the 512 gigabyte Xbox Series S. This was one of the two original versions of the system that released back in 2020. Uh, and it is meant primarily to be the most cost-effective way of getting into the Xbox ecosystem. Uh, at MSRP, it's 299, 300 bucks. Oftentimes you can find it for cheaper though. There have also been things like bundles. Uh, and this really is the lowest cost entry point. This is a digital only system. It doesn't use discs. It is the lower spec option. So it's not gonna be able to play games quite as visually beautifully as its older sibling, the Xbox Series X. But ultimately, if all you need is just an Xbox machine that you can hook up to a TV and start diving into things like Game Pass, this is the option that's gonna do that at the lowest price possible. Uh, the next step up from that is the one terabyte Series S. This was originally released last year in a black design and as part of this most recent showcase, they announced that they're also gonna re-release it in white once again, so you can get in that white option if you prefer. Uh, this is effectively the exact same thing as the 512 option. It just has double the storage capacity, allowing you to have a lot more games installed all at once for an increased price of 50 bucks, taking it up to 350. Now, a third option is another one of the ones that was revealed at the recent Summer Showcase and is actually the one that actually is a new model in a sense, uh, which is the Xbox Series X all digital edition. This offers the power level of the Series X for things like higher resolutions, sometimes better frame rates, really just varies across the game, but generally speaking, is going to allow you to play games in a much prettier state than the Series S. Uh, but with this all digital option, like the Series S, there is no disc slot. You cannot get any games physically for it. Uh, if you have any interest in being able to break out your old Xbox One games and pop them into the slot, that's not gonna work. You gotta rely entirely on just using this system digitally, which is an important thing to keep in mind. The upside to this, at least in a sense, is that it's also making the system just a little bit cheaper, uh, coming in at 450, 50 bucks less than the next step up, the original Series X. Uh, this was, again, one of the launch options that came out back in 2020. This was the original full price option for being able to play games in their full glory, as well as maintaining actually being able to use discs, unlike the Series S, and comes in at a price point of 500. And lastly, another newly revealed one, the most expensive option on this list to the point where it's honestly a little bit spicy, the Special Edition Series X. Uh, now, unlike the other options on this list, it sounds like this is going to be a limited option. Uh, it is not available for pre-order just yet, but if it's something you're interested in, you probably want to keep your eyes open for this one because it might not stick around too much longer, at least based on how Xbox has presented it so far. And this is effectively the same thing as the regular Series X, but with two important differences. One, uh, it does have a unique visual style. Uh, it offers these very bright green highlights on things like the stand as well as having these bright glowy dots on the body along with a more unique controller to pair with it. Uh, and then the other important actual functional difference, uh, it offers the largest storage option out of any of these systems. Uh, the other options again either came in 512 for the Series S or one terabyte for a lot of the mid-range options and this one is going to offer a whopping two terabytes. This is a very shiny version of the system literally but it is going to cost you. Uh, now, with those five models laid out, again, yes, there are five different models at different price points, but ultimately, really, it's kind of like three different versions of the system, uh, going from the Series S with different storage sizes, Series X with different storage sizes, and then in the middle is that all digital Series X. And so the main questions we really have to look over and answer here is how much storage do you really need, how important a physical drive is, and what is the important difference between the Series S and Series X in actual practical experience. Experience. I'm gonna start with storage because this is actually, from a at least price standpoint, a little more interesting than you might think. Uh, when it comes to expanding the storage of Xbox systems, you actually have to buy a proprietary expansion card. You can use external SSDs and things for if you wanna be able to store 
older system games, but in order to support those titles that are running on current gen systems, you have to use their official expansion cards. And in the case of those official ones, they can actually get pretty pricey. Uh, at least MSRP wise, you're looking at a minimum of 90 bucks just to get an extra 512 gigs. If you want a full terabyte, that costs even more. Uh, and so with that in mind, when you look at the price difference between the different options of systems right now, if you want as much storage as possible, it is a better idea to throw a little more down at the outset just to get that extra storage right away. For instance, 512 Series S to one terabyte Series S, that's a $50 difference. If you did that afterwards with an expansion card, it's 90 bucks. Uh, same applies to the Series X and limited edition design, right? That is a one terabyte difference for $100 more. And if you were to invest in one of the bigger expansion cards that goes to a full terabyte, that's more like an extra 150 bucks. Now, the other question here is, do you even need that much storage? Which ultimately comes down to what type of stuff you're playing and your own patience level for uninstalling and reinstalling things. Uh, as someone who has used the 512 Series S to date, like that is one of my main systems still alongside the Series X, the 512 doesn't last particularly long depending on what you're playing. I mean, if you're sticking entirely to smaller indie games and that kind of thing, yeah, you're gonna be able to make use of quite a bit of space, but the moment you get invested in any kind of major AAA launch, if there's a Game Pass title you wanna try out and it's one of the big launches from Xbox, Call of Duty alone is just gigantic these days, uh, that's going to eat up a ton of space very, very quickly. This isn't to say that 512 is unusable in these conditions, but you're gonna to have to be prepared for the fact that you're just gonna be juggling installations left and right. Uninstalling games, reinstalling games, uh, depending on your internet speed, this might even be an even bigger headache for how long it takes to download a game fresh all over again. It is something that I personally have done a lot with how many different games I try to keep up with, but uh, being able to avoid it as much as possible with more storage, is certainly appreciated. Ultimately, when it comes to storage, more is absolutely better, but it is possible to get by in the lower ones if you're able to deal with the headaches that just come with that. Now, question number two, physical versus digital only. This is a bit of a weighty topic for reasons. Uh, it kind of feeds a little bit into this overall larger debate when it comes to things like preservation and actually being able to own physical versions of your games. Uh, I will say me personally, I have fought to hold on to physical copies of as many titles as I can on my other platforms. And Xbox is specifically the one that I have just chosen to go all digital on for the sake of convenience and making use of things like Game Pass. It absolutely has its drawbacks though. Uh, for instance, you're always gonna be at the mercy of how things are priced on digital storefronts. Uh, as opposed to some games, you know, depending on how well they sold or how many copies went into circulation, you might be able to get a pretty good price off for getting a physical copy somewhere. Not to mention the fact that you can do things like borrow games. You can even pop in old games. This is actually one of the things I really like about how Xbox does their kind of weird form of backwards compatibility that doesn't get talked about a lot. If you have an old disc, for a game that is supported in backwards compatible for Xbox, you can pop that in, it reads the disc and realizes, oh, you have this, do you wanna download the digital version of it and then play it? And if you have a digital only model, that is not an option you could take advantage of. This does also just come down a little bit to personal preference and how you see yourself using your system. Uh, if you've just already moved on to being entirely digital, if you have no interest in holding onto physical versions of games whatsoever, the digital options are gonna be cheaper, not just the Series S's, but also this new digital only Series X. It's a general trend and shift to go digital only that I'm personally not really entirely loving for the industry at large. Uh, but look, if you just wanna save the money you can and just get a system that's able to play the games and you have no interest in supporting discs whatsoever, there's not a ton of reason to invest in the more expensive ones unless you really want that shiny limited edition option for 600 bucks. And then question number three, the Series X and Series S split. Uh, one of the big headaches with this particular question is that there isn't necessarily a perfect degree of consistent variety between how games perform. Uh, depending on an individual specific title, you're going to see some games where the Series S version is wonderful and plays very closely to the Series X version despite being at a lower resolution, but still maintains, you know, frame rates and graphical effects and ultimately is a good looking version of the game. And other times there are specific titles where the Series S version doesn't perform as well. Generally speaking, when it comes to first party, Xbox themselves are very good about making sure that their Series 
Series S versions of games are going to be as competitively performative as possible to make sure that it's a good one. But when it comes to third party, that's where you can end up running into situations where is the Series S version playable? Certainly. Is it keeping a relatively close neck and neck performance profile with its Series X version? Uh, not necessarily. There's even been the cases of some games where eventually they've been fixed, but at launch, the Series S version just ends up having a lot more problems. Uh, Alan Wake 2 is a great example of this. The game had a lot of issues at launch on Series S specifically, including some mouth sync issues, but it has been fixed now, but that is an issue you would have had to have dealt with at launch and waited for a patch for that you wouldn't have had on the Series X. I will say, as I mentioned earlier, I have done my best to really actually keep playing actively on both Series X and Series S. I have one at my office and one at my home, and I try to put a healthy amount of time on both versions because I always want to get a decent idea of how games are continuing to perform on that lower spec version versus the higher spec. And the vast majority of the time, the Series S does well. There are those exceptions. There are gonna be those specific titles that for whatever reason just end up being a headache for the Series S specifically. Uh, but in most cases, the Series S version ends up being a perfectly stable, solid way to play and experience games. The Series X is absolutely going to be the better looking version. That's literally the point of it. It is the more expensive one for a reason. But if your goal is just being able to play games in a playable solid state and you don't care about fine details, you're not even gonna be playing it on a gigantic screen or something, then the Series S is going to be a solid option. Bringing this all together, I think the lineup that Xbox has right now with these five different price points, as many as those are, uh, does answer a little bit of a helpful question of, you know, depending on what your specific needs are, there's probably gonna be a system that fits best for you. Uh, generally speaking, where I kind of sit on the options right now is that, the most important question right away is to answer whether or not you care about physical, because immediately, if you do, you have to get a Series X, there is no other option. And then you just gotta debate if you wanna throw out more for the more expensive one. And if you are cool with the idea of going just completely all digital and you're looking at the Series S or that all digital Series X, I think the big question here is how much you care about visuals uh, and whether or not this is going to be your primary system. I think if you're planning on going all in on Xbox and you want that to be your primary machine and that's how you're experiencing the vast majority of your games, it's worth spending the bit more to get the all digital version of the Series X, because ultimately that is going to give you the best looking version of games. If however, the Xbox is something where maybe it's a secondary system, you already have a PlayStation 5 or a PC or something that you're putting more time into and you just want to have an Xbox system as like a Game Pass, an exclusives machine and just something to have on the side, the Series S is really in my mind the perfect solution there. Because ultimately, especially when there's the question of like performance and if a game is going to run well on a Series S versus a Series X, first party Xbox stuff is gonna be the thing. So if your main idea here is you already have a main home elsewhere and you just want an Xbox machine to do Xbox specific things, then the Series S is going to show its value while also being at a lower price point and having a nice smaller trim body that's easy to set up around places. So those are just my thoughts on which Xbox you should buy in 2024 with just so many versions coming out right now. Uh, I've linked down below a couple of those choices that you can currently order for the other ones that are just pre-order only for now. I'll update this later once those are readily available. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button to let me know, subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you guys later. Later.